All right, good morning. Daily on the line. Um, I'm Delia Imbo from 3 Team Pastry Academy. Um, yesterday we started talking about the transiting from paid employment to self employment in export business. And I told you we'll be discussing seven uh, areas. We discussed prospect yesterday. Remember all the other area I talked about that we'll be discussing. Having discussed the, pros, uh, the preamble rather yesterday, today we'll be talking about prospect. If you're able to finish, maybe in the evening we discuss the product. Then we move to the processes. Then we discuss the problem. <clears throat> and then we discuss the possibility and likely end up with um, participation. And likely end up with participation. So if you are, if you are, have log in and um, you know a friend who is trying to also transit from paid employment to self employment, who probably also have interest in export, maybe this is the time to share the video for them to get to hear about what we'll be discussing this morning transiting from paid employment to self employment in export business. So today we'll be discussing prospect. Prospect. The question I'll be asking you this morning is, what do you see in Nigeria today? What do you see in Nigeria today? You know, what do you see in Nigeria will determine what you get from Nigeria. There are many people that don't see anything good in this country. And it's very unfortunate, really, because a foreigner really do not see what you see. You know, the difference between... What, what, and that's the major difference between us as human beings, really. Because what you see is a function of the knowledge that you have. Because knowledge is life. So when a foreigner comes into Nigeria... When you look at the environment in Nigeria, as he's going on the road, he's seeing opportunities. Uh, a story was told of a foreigner that came into Nigeria. I think it was Chinese. They were going back to their country, and they were discussing in the plane. Unfortunately, another Nigerian was in that plane, who luckily understood their language. And they were saying in Nigeria, there's money on the road, but the Nigerians cannot see it. And they're very right. What is making them to see those opportunities? Because of the knowledge that they have. Knowledge is light. Knowledge is light. As many who are in Nigeria today who are complaining and not able to see opportunity is actually because of knowledge. The same country many people are running away from. Do you know people are coming into this country every day? You know, the last time I traveled out, I was coming back and I was just imagining the plane, just in January this year. A lot of people in the plane were foreigners coming into Nigeria. Of course, they're not calling for tourism, neither are they coming to count the bridges. They are coming to do businesses. They are seeing opportunity that we are not seeing. And that's why I'm asking you the question this morning. What do you see in Nigeria today? What do you see in Nigeria today? If you don't see anything good in Nigeria, I can assure you. I can assure you that if because you're not seeing anything good in Nigeria, you won't be able to do anything good in Nigeria. So it's very important we begin to see something good and something great in this country. And, and, and that will be a function of what you are seeing really, the knowledge you have. With the time where you're able to see. But remember, we're discussing export business. We're discussing opportunity in export business because of the fact that you need to begin to see how you can export your product out of this country. Maybe you are listening to me and you're producing a product. Maybe you produce shoes, you produce clothes, you produce, you're in fashion, you're in cosmetics. There's so many things that can be exported beyond food. And I've said in the first edition that we did uh, yesterday that look, I don't want to promote commodities. Why? I've come to the realization, conclusion that commodity is modern slavery. Commodity is modern slavery. So anybody that decides that the only thing you want to ship out is commodity is actually modern slavery. Why? Foreigner number one determine the price of your product. Foreigner alone does not just determine the price of your product. The foreigner also, at the end of the day, leave you in the cold if they choose not to buy from you and buy from somewhere else. They colonize you eventually, telling you this, the price they want to buy this product. And you don't have a choice, really. Because most of the product you have not learned on how to use it, on how to uh, maximize that product, on how to produce, come, some, come out with something good from that product. Let me give a good example. We are in the season of cashew nuts. It's February, cashew nuts has started in Nigeria. Do you know that in Nigeria, when we export cashew nuts, we export all cashew nuts to just two, three countries. Vietnam, India. Probably Brazil. Very few countries. But do you know the day you remove the shell from your cashew nut, you will be selling it to as many countries as possible where they eat cashew nut. Now, those, that 
casino you have, you have, you have, that you have initially, that's the casino that you have not removed the shell to become canal, you can only sell to few countries and at about $1,500 per metric tons. But when you remove the shell, you can sell as high as $15,000 per metric tons just by removing the shell. Just by removing the shell. Just by removing the shell of the product. So, what do you see in Nigeria today? So, people see unemployment in Nigeria, and I'm not disputing the fact that there's unemployment in Nigeria. It's a fact that there's unemployment in Nigeria. But if that's the only thing you see in Nigeria, I'm sorry. Foreigners are not seeing that, and that's why they are the one taking advantage of your opportunities. Some people see poverty in Nigeria. That's a fact. If that's the only thing you see in Nigeria, it's very unfortunate. Because foreigners are not seeing poverty in Nigeria. Even though there is poverty, you can choose what you want to see in Nigeria. Some are seeing frustration in Nigeria. And there's no doubt about the fact that enough of Nigerians are frustrated. Understandably so. Because of our environment. Because of government and the like. But do you know what? Foreigners are not seeing that. You know, because they are not coming here to see what your government is doing anyway. They are coming here looking for opportunities. And go back to their country. So can you begin to see opportunities in farming? Opportunities in mining? Opportunities in fashion, opportunities in cosmetics, opportunities in different sector, technology and the like, every sector of the economy. And more importantly, opportunities in our population. Opportunities in our population. Do you know that the land, our nation Nigeria, is blessed, so richly blessed, such that almost every country, sorry, almost every state in this country has something to offer as far as export business is concerned. Almost every state, almost every state. From commodities to solid minerals to manufactured goods, there's always something a state can produce in this country that, they are, that is unique to them, that they have an advantage, competitive advantage in almost every state in this country. But unfortunately, every state in this country depends on the center. Come to think of it, the center that every state in this country depends on, what do that center do to be able to give the, the subvention, the money, the monthly allocation to the state? What do they do? They export. Is it not interesting that the state depends on the center for their survival? And what the center is doing is export. What the center is doing is export. Even though the state depends on the export of the survival, what the center is doing is export. What are they exporting? Minerals. Uh, sorry, uh, co co uh, commodities. Commodities like crude oil and gas. That's what the center is exporting. And that's what the state is depending upon. Is it not interesting? Do you know? That no nation can grace economy to desire side by trading with itself. Every nation will, must trade with other parts of the world for them to grow their GDP. Every nation of the world must trade with other parts of the world to grow their GDP. When there is battle in the world, when there is always fight in the world, it's always a fight for economy, fight for trade, fight for economic space. Even World War I, World War II, go and check the history. It's all around trade. Because trade gives you power. It's all around trade. And that's what I'm telling people. Look, you really cannot do without trading. The world is the world of trade. Someone described the world as a trade center. He described the world as a trade center. And that you must be trading something. Either you are trading in goods or services. You are trading in your skill. You are trading in a product. Everybody must trade. The largest exporter in the world. The largest exporter in the world is China. Followed by the US. Followed by the Germany. The largest importer in the world is the U.S., followed by China, followed by Germany. The first top three, top three uh, trader in the world, U.S., Germany, China. Who are the top economy in the world? The same people. The same people. U.S., Germany, China. If you go and check the top ten economy in the world, there are major traders in the world. And they're just clearly telling you how vital and important international trade is to any nation. No nation can grow to disaster by trading with itself. Everybody needs to trade. Everybody needs to trade. So if there is a skill, I think as many people as possible to acquire is the skill in international trade. Either in importing or in exporting. Or in consulting. Or doing, or doing something. Or in technology. As long as supporting trade. If any sector of the economy fail, there is a sector of the economy that will never fail. It is trade. Why? Every nation that fails to trade will die in national debt will be taken over by what is called neo-colonialism because they can't sustain themselves. The government cannot sustain itself because government only make money by trading and the trading is on export. And that's why you need to also learn how to export. Transiting from local 
uh, for transiting rather from paid employment to self-employment and export business. Exporting our product, we export us to inexhaustible market around the world and present a unique opportunity for SME to grow. I'm talking about the benefit of export. Remember, we're discussing the prospect. We discussed yesterday. For those that are just listening to it, you can go and check my timeline to see the video of yesterday. The video we discussed yesterday, that was on uh, 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 prospect, uh, sorry, on preamble. And today we are discussing prospect. I can see only video with Joe. <laughs> okay, I can see a lot of people logging in. Thank you very much for logging in. You can share also with some of your friends that might be interested, that you think might be of, I mean, this might be of interest to them. Who are looking at leaving their job and they want to do business. And I'm saying whatever business you want to do, please find a way to connect it to international trade. Why? Because that's what makes make economy to grow. That's what leaves people out of poverty. Imagine if Nigeria is producing so much, but we're trading only among ourselves. We can only grow this much. At some point, we need to trade beyond. Do you know what I discovered about China? China will do everything possible to trade with other parts of the world. China will build bridges like they've done to Hong Kong. Building bridges that will reduce transit time from about 3-4 hours to 30 minutes. They will build road, the Silk Road that they're building. They build rail from China to Europe. They will do everything possible to reduce transit time for trade. Because if they are going to ship to Europe, imagine how they are going to move from their own side to Indian Ocean, to Atlantic Ocean, to Pacific Ocean before they can go to that side, to Europe. But now they are building rail, 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 rail that pass through several countries. Why? They understand the power of trade. They've lived hundreds of millions of people out of poverty by just trading. Massive exposure of Nigerian commodity and product will bring the hard currencies as export proceeds and thus strengthen Naira vis-a-vis -vis other currency of the world. Increase in exposure of agrarian commodity will make farming become very lucrative due to increased demand for farm produce and thus create jobs. Due to increase in demand for farm produce and thus create jobs. It's so extremely important how great trade is for any nation. Look, we really cannot survive without trade. If there's one skill that you need to acquire, it's about trade. And I think you should do more of export and import because export has more benefit. Import has benefit to a nation, no doubt about it. But export has more benefit than import. Export is one that creates jobs. When you import, you actually import poverty. When you export, you create jobs. When you import, you import poverty because you import things into your country that other people can actually produce. That's why I must commend CBN for some of the things they've been doing in recent time. Do you know that? Just telling you how important trade is and how how we have how we have decided to, to to treat this nation by not trading or by importing. There is a company in Nigeria who produce fertilizer who incurred billions of naira in losses last year because Nigeria was importing fertilizer, and CBN have to stop that this year by ensuring that people importing fertilizer cannot access foreign next thing. Now, that country is producing fertilizer locally. He is, is capable of, of hiring so many people. But we decide to be importing fertilizer. So when we import fertilizer, we're actually importing poverty, importing unemployment. Because there is a company in Nigeria that can produce it. And we are leaving them to incur losses and lay off staff. And that's what import do to a nation. When you're importing, you should be importing technology, you should be importing machinery, you should be importing things that support production and then you should be producing and shipping to nation who need that product who are not able to produce it because of your own competitive advantage successful as of commodity could lead to Nigeria via the back door so if you start by exporting sometimes you might start by exporting commodities no nothing bad in it but don't stay with commodities like I said exporting commodities is modern slavery so don't stay with commodity but you can actually start with commodities why? Because you have not been able to learn how to produce. But let me tell you something about production. You don't need to be the one producing. You know, sometimes when I talk about people exporting finished products that you are working and you are, I'm telling you about, you ask yourself, okay, so Dele, how do I begin to export finished products? And I say, look, you don't need to be the one to produce that item. No. We currently export out of Nigeria. Last month, we export PAP. We have been exporting PAP for many months and we export a tea. Many of you have, would have seen Master T. Now, a number of products we export from Nigeria are not our product. We are doing what is called cooperative export. Cooperative export is a decision where you get product from different small scale businesses and ship it out. So we do, we get product from different small and ship out. 
cooperative export. And that's a way we can help you also get buyer for products. So you don't need to be the one producing those products. Do you know that a lot of importers, a lot of people who think we import into Nigeria, the people importing that product are not the one producing them. They're not the one producing them. They actually, Nigerians, we go abroad, discuss with a company to produce for them in their brand and bring that product into Nigeria. Is it not interesting? They bring that product into Nigeria. What that is telling you is that you don't need to be the one producing the product. Currently, I have about three clients or four clients who are currently working with NAVDAC to get NAVDAC number for a product that NAVDAC already approved. And they are going to get that product in their own brand and they are going to be, begin to export it. So what that means is that that company is now being empowered. That company that is producing does not need to go to bank to source for fund. You that need them to produce for you, cost, it is called contract production. They produce for you and you give them. You now give them money to produce for you in your own brand. So now you have a product called Testy Pot Pap. Testy Pot is currently producing for about three clients. Coding for about three clients. So Testy Pot, if he's, if he fell, his capacity is to, he can only raise money to produce 1,000, 10,000 uh, sachet or 10,000 bags of pap or 10,000 carton of pap in a month. Now, Tasty Pot can produce about 20, 30,000 carton of pap because other people are giving her money. So she's still producing for herself, for her customer. She's not producing for others who are exporting it. She's expanding her market. So you're actually doing Nigeria a lot of good by supporting small scale businesses to produce in your own brand. So what I'm telling you is that you don't need to be the one that owns that factory. You only need to partner with someone to produce for you and then you're able to export it. Do you know that in Nigeria today, more than 70% of our farmers are peasants? About 30 to 50% of our commodity prices are post harvest losses. About more than 40% of our arable land are uncultivated. These are huge opportunity. Now, look at this. We have not utilized most of our land. Most of our farmers are peasants, they are not mechanized. Most of our commodity prices are post harvest losses. But do you know that Nigeria is still the top producer of most commodity in the world? Nigeria is the top producer. Nigeria is the fourth largest producer of cocoa beans in the world. Cote d'Ivoire is the largest producer. And Cote d'Ivoire is so small a country compared to Nigeria, even in landmass. But we are not, we've not gotten our ass together. So we are the third or fourth largest producers. We are even becoming fifth largest producer of cocoa in the world. But where I'm going is this. We are still among the top ten producers of most exportable commodity in the world, despite the fact that our farmers are peasants. Despite the fact that we have not taken a grief very, very, very seriously. Despite the fact that we are, not, uh, we are not doing all that we should do to support farmers. Despite the fact that our commodity perish oppose harvest losses. Someone is asking a question. Dele, please do a price promo on your book and courses. So, so I can buy. Okay, I will discuss with my colleague. We will probably come up with that. Someone is asking a promo on some of our products. Now, Nigeria is the second largest producer of cashew nuts. Nigeria is the third largest producer of sesame seed. Nigeria is the largest producer of cassava and yam. Nigeria is the largest producer of cassava and yam. Nigeria is the largest producer of cassava and yam. Nigeria is the largest producer of cassava and yam. Do you know what Thailand is doing with cassava? Check out online. Thailand is not producing cassava as much as Nigeria. But Thailand is the largest exporter of cassava. Cassava product. Do you know what cassava can be turned into? Many things that can be produced from cassava. Nigeria produces more than 60% of yam in the world. Nigeria produces about 25% of cassava in the world. Thailand is the second largest producer. But Thailand is doing much more with cassava. You know what I just discovered in Nigeria? I think... The government have reoriented us. Government export crude and import PMS. And Nigerians just follow suit. We just follow suit. We just come concerned about exporting commodity. When people talk about export, the first thing someone is thinking about is cocoa, cashew, come on, Arabic. I'm mentioning this commodity now to let you know that we are the largest producer and the fact that we can convert this commodity to finished product and do a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot with them. So we are the largest producer of, of yam. We are the fifth largest producer of ginger. We are the um, third largest producer of gum Arabic. As a matter of fact, just think of most exportable commodity in the world. Nigeria is one of the largest producers. 
But when you look at the people exporting those items, we are nowhere to be found. We are nowhere to be found. We are nowhere to be found. And that's why I have to start this on Facebook, educating people that, look, you can export, you can begin to prepare for export while you are working. You can actually export while you are working, actually, as a way of preparing for transition from self-employment to paid employment. And I've told you, don't think of commodities. Commodities are expensive. Commodities are very, very expensive. I'm going to be telling you along the line how to look for buyers. Commodities are very, very, very expensive. Don't look at commodities. There are transactions you can do, export you can do with less than 500,000 naira. So don't look at big money for you to start exporting. Those your friends in the UK, those your friends in the US, those your friends in South Africa, those your friends in Germany, those your relatives abroad are potential opportunity for you to be able to export items to them. So look for finished product that you can export. I'm going to be educating us on a lot of this in the coming days on what we can do and how we can grow export. I'll be coming in the morning around 7, 8 a.m. and in the evening also around 6, 7 p.m. Just educating us on the potential we have in export in Nigeria and the fact that you can successfully transit from paid employment to self-employment just simply exporting, just simply exporting from paid employment to self-employment in export business. And the fact that it's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. All you need to do is to get, if you go online, you see some of the videos on YouTube. If you get, check my YouTube page, by Medela Yibi, but check, search my name on YouTube page, on YouTube, rather, you'll be able to see my channel and you can get to learn a lot about it. You can go to our Facebook page, uh, at 3 Pest Trade. You can check us out on Instagram at Athlete Impress Trade. And you can check, I have a, a blog. It's called www.tradeinfoeng.com. You see a lot of write-ups on this blog. Since 2008, I've been writing on that blog. You see a lot of write-ups on that blog on export. So there are information for you. What you need to do is to learn and read about to get this information. But more importantly, having read about them, to also practicalize them. Don't just acquire the knowledge and then don't do anything about it because another thing we have is people just learn and learn and learn then they don't step out like i said you can begin to export finished product you don't